Good morning, St. Andrews. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Won't you please stand across the church as we have our musicians play our doxology for us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> shall hear that I want to be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. May we see it. We now ask our musicians to please favor us with our first selection. upon bereaved families 
who will have empty places at their table because young people whom they sent to school did not come back home. We pray your blessings upon families devastated by the tornadoes of this weekend. such tragic loss of life. We care not so much for the property, for property can be replaced. But empty spaces and tables cannot. Have mercy upon them, Lord. Have mercy upon all who in this season of joy will labor under such a burden of grief. We pray for them the truth of your word, which tells us weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We ask now, Lord, for the measure of strength grace and mercy that we all might continue to bear up under the weight of a shape-shifting pandemic that we call COVID-19 even as we were prepared to go into 2022. But Lord, we know that you have been good. We know that your mercy still endures forever. And we know that it requires a trust beyond human sight to continue to keep our hand in your hand, O oh God, and go where you would lead. Thank you for blessing and watching over St. Andrews for our church family. And we pray, Lord, into all of our lives, your peace, for your peace passes our understanding. Your peace is able to keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Your peace is able to restore even what the angels declared unto the shepherds. Peace on earth. Goodwill toward all men and women. We thank you, God, for blessing us one more round and allowing ourselves together one more time in a place where we presume to call ourselves your children, not because we have been so good, but because you are good. And because you have promised to love us with a love that will never let us go. We give your name glory and praise now, God, for all of the great things that you have done, most of all, most of all for the gift of your son, Jesus. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. scripture lesson is taken from the Gospel of Luke. In the second chapter, we find these words beginning at the 8th verse. We read them as they are found in the King James Version of the Bible. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, 
keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That is verses 8 through 14 as found in the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. So ends the reading of our scripture. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. We would now ask our musicians to please favor us with two selections.
scripture that was read in your hearing, I would like to read once more. Verse 11 is found in the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I invite your attention for the next few minutes to the topic Restoring Bethlehem in Our Bedlam. Restoring Bethlehem in Our Bedlam. The scripture referenced as our text indicates that the angel took for granted that everyone, these shepherds for instance, everyone understood the city of David to be Bethlehem. It would therefore be easy for them to find the Christ child. They needed no directions. Everyone knew where the city of David was. Bethlehem. The popular understanding of the time was that the name Bethlehem meant city of David. Actually, in Hebrew, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, means house of bread. I want you to understand this morning how appropriate that is. How appropriate that those who had been anticipating the arrival of the one who would call himself the bread of life, how appropriate that they should find that one, that bread of life, in the house of bread. Do you get it? God has a sense of humor. But Bethlehem is more than the given name of the city of David. If you don't know anything about your pastor by now, you ought to know this much. Your pastor loves a good story. I've got a story to share with you, short story, this morning. Bethlehem. It is also the name originally given to the hospital of St. Mary of Bethlehem in Bishopsgate in England. It was the name given the hospital founded by the Sheriff of London in 1247 A.D. for the housing of the clergy of St. Mary of Bethlehem when they visited Britain. It is uncertain when the mentally ill were first received here. But the house is mentioned as a hospital in 1330 and the mentally ill or as they were called in that time lunatics were definitely stated to have been there in 1402 on the dissolution of the monasteries The hospital of Bethlehem passed to the London civic authorities and in 1547 it became a royal foundation for the reception of the insane, of lunatics. Its place was taken in 1675 by a new hospital in Moorfields. And this again was transferred to the Lambeth Road in 1815. 
Stay with me now. I'm going somewhere with this. Over the course of these six or so centuries, the colloquial usage, the slang, kind of vernacular called by its indigence, copy, allowed for a degeneration of the pronunciation of the word Bethlehem in its contracted and degenerated form, the word for the name of the hospital became Bedlam. By an extension in meaning, over the course of time, the word Bedlam has come to be applied to any asylum or any scene of disorder or chaos. Now this degeneration of over time of words or phrases is nothing unusual. I am reminded of one of the more frequently used phrases by us today in our party. We say goodbye. I would have you to know that goodbye is a contraction. It is a degeneration of the phrase, God be with me. Over the course of centuries, that phrase became contracted. God be with me became goodbye. Let's keep it seasonal. Many who do not like to say Merry Christmas at this time of year find that we use an alternative Happy Holidays. Well, that word holiday is a contraction. It is a degeneration over time of the two words holy day. Happy holidays is just a contraction of happy holy days. You know, I, I, I hope you get this because I want you to understand what happened when the word Bethlehem over time degenerated to become the word Bethlehem. How a word that meant peace on earth, goodwill toward men, came in modern parlance to be defined as the description of a place run by lunatics. You know, it's a question not so much to be answered within the context of our language as it is to be answered within the context of our living. It is a question to be answered because it is an integral part of the Christmas story. Christ was indeed born in Bethlehem, but Christ was born into Bethlehem. Christ was born into chaos. Christ was born into a world gone mad. Christ was born in Bethlehem, but it was into the Bethlehem of a jealous Herod. Christ was born in Bethlehem, but it was into the Bethlehem of religious cynicism. Christ was born in Bethlehem into the bedlam of sin, sick men and women lost in a world gone wrong. Now once again, once again, the Christ child is born in Bethlehem. We celebrate his birth. And he comes into the bedlam of our society. For Bedlam is where we live. And it is into our Bedlam that the Christ child comes. Am I the only one who believes that this world is a crazy place? Maybe we ought to call the United States what it really is. A cat of planter's peanuts. Bedlam. Bedlam 
Salem is where we live. Still Jesus comes. He comes into the bedroom of a celebration for him that is seldom about him. He comes into the bedroom of a world that is still separated along arbitrary, nonsensical lines of class, caste, and color. It's a crazy world. You know, even now, in the Christmas season, somewhere there are white supremacists plotting the random killing of people of color as a means of trying to set off a civil war. And we go through our day-to-day -day existence as if that is normal. As if a Donald Trump is normal. As if a QAnon is normal. It's crazy. Still, Jesus comes into our bedroom. Jesus comes into the bedroom of a world where children carry guns to school and use them to kill their classmates. It is the bedlam of a world ravaged by a pandemic whose prohibitions are rewriting the way people of faith worship. Prohibitions, psychologists tell us, that will have lasting and untold implications for the mental health and well-being of our young people. Still, Jesus comes. I'm glad I'm not Jesus because I'm not real sure I would have bothered that Jesus bothers. Jesus bothers to come into a world where wealth buys justice. A bedlam of a world where right around us normal folk well, allegedly normal folk, can be overtaken by one insane moment of road rage, causing them to kill someone for cutting them off in traffic. Folk, I want you to understand, if you don't know, you heard it here. It's crazy out there. It's a madhouse. It's a madhouse. It's a world where folk are without hope lost in darkness and consumed by despair. And maybe, just maybe, if we turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to that kind of suffering, we are just as crazy as they, if not more so. For you see, this is a world where the richest country on the world, in the world, well, I can't really say that anymore now, can I? America is no longer the richest country. You can know that, don't you? America is now number two. We've been overtaken by China. But I digress. Still a world, America, so rich, where we have and enjoy so much, yet we hear and remain unmoved by so wicked a phrase as homeless children. Well, this is a world where, as we speak, parents are somewhere plotting to take away not only the few benefits that the poor do receive, but certainly trying very hard to make sure they don't receive any more. World where parents are plotting to take children, kill them by raising them in a sterile, nurtured, love free environment of the state. But what did Phillips Brooks pen in 1868? Phillips Brooks built the him a little town of Bethlehem. There's a line in there that says, Yet in thy dark streets shineth 
the everlasting light. In the darkness even of this present age, there shines the everlasting light of God's goodness, God's grace, God's mercy, and God's love. Jesus. He is the one John called that true light which lights every man. In his earthly ministry, he was called by many names. Teacher, the Nazarene, man from Galilee, son of man, Savior. But right now, we need to see him as the Christ child. We celebrate his birth in Bethlehem. We remember it in this season because it brings him even now into our Bethlehem. Jesus can restore Bethlehem in our Bethlehem. Jesus can bring peace on earth, goodwill to folk everywhere, into a place where chaos and madness rule. Jesus comes and we celebrate his coming once more that this crazy house might once more become the house of David. And folks, that's good news. That's good news. We don't have to put up with the madness anymore. Jesus comes to let us know that's done. The words of the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Jesus can restore Bethlehem in our Bethlehem. It's a crazy world. It is a crazy world. And we turn blind eye and deaf ear to craziness all around us. Craziness. Legislators openly, unashamedly trying to rescind the rights of people to have their vote counted. Legislators in individual states, redrawing and gerrymandering lines to dilute the voting strength of people of color. And we go on like nothing is wrong. It's craziness. It's a crazy world. For people of color, it's worse than that. How many different ways can you die as a black person in this country? Driving while black, sleeping while black, walking while black, talking while black, going to a park while black, walking a dog. I think the, the list is endless. But Jesus is able to restore. He can bring that man even into our bed. One of these days I may do a study on that word lunatic. It's fallen out of favor now. You know, it's not a politically popular word, but it's an interesting word. Because the word lunatic is tied to the, the belief of the ancient Greeks that the mentality of people was tied to the seasons of, of, of the moon. That's where the word lunatic comes from. And even today, an ER doctor will tell you there's always an uptick in activity. 
when the moon is full. That might be for another time. Won't you stand across the church? Sometimes the madness, the sheer madness, is more than we can bear. It's not the weight of the world that gets to us, at least not to me. And I'm not much different than you. So by extension, I take it to mean for us all. It is not the weight of the world so much that does us in as it is the weight of the crazy in the world. There's a whole lot of crazy. Thank God for Jesus. His word declares that he will keep the mind in perfect peace that is stayed on him. Thank God for Jesus. In the midst of chaos, Jesus alone can promise a peace which passes our understanding. Able to keep our hearts and our minds in Him. Somebody today might need restoration. Crazy can make you give up on people Crazy can make you give up on the future. But do not allow crazy to make you give up on God. God is still good and God's mercy still endures. There may be someone under the sound of my voice that does not know that, has no relationship God in Jesus Christ, and so it is for your benefit that we open the doors of the church right now and invite you. If you do not have that kind of relationship with God in Christ, know that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And we invite you to come. Come into the family of God in Christ. Then you need a good place to grow and nurture that relationship. You can do that right here with us in St. Andrews. The doors of our Elvis are open wide. So too are the doors of our hearts and we invite you to come. Fellowship with us. Give up a seat, give up a place in line, give up a parking space. Form some random act of kindness. 
make the crazies in the world think that you're a little bit crazy. So sometimes you can do that just by smiling at folks. It'll drive them crazy. They'll wonder what the world are you winning about. Remember also to continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Stay healthy in this season. I know I'm talking to a vaccinated crowd, so I'm going to ask a vaccinated and boosted up crowd to remind everyone to get the shots, get all of them. They come out with another one, get that one too. Keep getting the shots until we don't need the shots anymore. Stay healthy until we can come together again in worship as we are accustomed to worshiping and hear the words which will call for response. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, our feet in the standing, in the thy gates, Lord Jerusalem, for a day in thy courts. It's better than a thousand. I better be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. That day is coming. I'm to stand now across the church for our doxology, our sister, come on. Yes, announcement. Yes, uh, yes, I, the congregation does not know. I want to let anyone know about the passing of the mother of Patrice Santee. And the arrangements are uh, not that they're not altogether made at this time. But we also know that uh, her address, the contact information, going out to those with email. And those of you who get it and know someone who does not have email to receive it, please pass the contact information along to them. And remember to keep Patrice's family lifted up in prayer. Thank you so much, Sister Carmen. Praise God for all blessings for you.